This week's Rack of the Week is about making choices. How do we choose wisely? Last week's Rack of the Week, I showed an amateur player for the first time, and I talked about his choices and what I thought were the wrong choices and why. And next week, I'm going to do the same thing to myself. I'm going to show some choices and some racks where I think I made bad decisions that led to missed shots or other failures. So that's going to be a fun one to make. But for now, this is a simple one, but very important. How do we make wise choices? Let's get into the rack. Welcome to this week's Rack of the Week. This rack begins with a pretty standard side of rack break shot. The break ball is pretty high, but I've got an inside angle, so this is just a straight follow on the cue ball. Gold crown table, five inch pockets, pretty easy table. Notice that the cue ball went this direction off the bottom rail. It didn't go to the side rail. It probably had some right English on it to do that. And uh, I've made my decision really quick. Let's talk about it. What I've noticed and uh, what you should look for at the beginning of many racks is you're going to have a cluster in the center of the table and you're going to have a ball below the cluster. So I go right to the six ball because that lets me bring the cue ball low on one of these balls. I'm going to cut the four ball in the corner and go into the cluster. That's just standard, standard straight pool, just textbook. And it's for that reason that I'm shooting the six and not the nine, because with the nine, the cue ball is going to want to go this direction. It's going to be hard to control the cue ball and get it to stop right here. So that's a choice you want to choose wisely. And I think that's a, a typical choice that you're going to be faced. Leave that nine ball there. That's an insurance ball on this rebreak shot. See that? The four ball is less of an insurance ball on this rebreak shot. I'm sorry, the six ball that I pocketed is less of an insurance ball because it was against the rail. So no matter where my cue ball ends up, I've got a much better chance of cutting the nine ball. That's why it's a better insurance ball. Leave it there. Don't shoot it until you need it later. The priority now is opening up this cluster with insurance balls. So that's the, that's the reason for those choices. Now, all that said, I noticed this while rewatching the video. How about playing the cue ball a little bit farther and then shooting the 11 past the 8, stunning the cue ball up into these balls? I think that's a better shot. I think it's more controlled. I think you have a much higher chance of the cue ball stopping right here and you have an insurance ball either direction on the 4 or the 8. You can hit it a little bit softer. You have a chance of knocking the 14 into the 15 to make it into a break ball. The cue ball may also go into the 12, knocking it here to make it into a break ball. I got a lot of yellow lines on the screen, but I think that makes a more sense. I think that's a better shot, and that would have been a better choice to play position on the 11. Now, obviously, I did not get a shot on the 9 ball. Oh, maybe I did, possibly did. But I've got two shots right now after opening the cluster. Let's take a look at the rack. There's no break ball. What am I going to do for a break ball? I don't know. But I have two shots to choose from. And I could, I could tap the 10 in the side or I have a shot on the 5. I guess I have a shot on the 9 as well. But that's, but that's a cut shot and it's really hard to control the cue ball. On the 5 ball, it's a very direct shot. And maybe I can make something happen with these balls to create a break shot. And uh, these, the 8 and the 14 are a little bit tied up. It's for that reason that I think the choice is to shoot the 5 here. That's the best choice. If you shoot the 10, the cue ball is going in this direction. So what are you going to play position for? Maybe spin it back down here for the 7 or, or spin it two rails back center table. That's actually not a bad option just to come two rails center table. But another thing to think about is this. The 3 balls is... Uh, near the side pocket, near the rail. That's generally considered somewhat of a trouble ball. Well, that 10 ball is a key ball to get on the 3. That renders the 3 ball, it's no longer a trouble ball at all. If you leave the 10. That's why the choice here is to look for a different shot. Don't shoot this 10 because you need it later to get on the 3. 
So for that reason, let's shoot the five ball. Now, I'm not trying to do anything um, cute. I'm not sure where the cue ball is going. I'm just doing kind of a stun forward. The cue ball is going to hit the 12, and I should have a shot on one of these balls. And, you know, honestly, the 10 in the side might be an insurance ball if the cue ball, if I hit it a little harder and the cue ball goes somewhere else. So now I'm thinking about a break shot. I need a break shot. I don't have one. So this is an opportunity. It's maybe not a great opportunity, but I'm going to draw the cue ball up into the 8. Possibly it'll hit the 14 and knock one of these into break ball position. I like the idea of hitting the 8 and going to the rail and off like this. So that this is a good chance of creating a break ball with the 8. It's unlikely that I'm going to get that I'm not going to have a shot. I'll probably have a shot on the 12 ball next or maybe the 15 in the side or the 10 in the side. You got to go for it. The choice here is, you know, some people might roll roll forward and do something different. You've got a shot now. You have an opportunity to now to possibly make a break ball. You got to take it. You got to take it. And so I didn't hit that hard enough. Now, again, what what are my choices? The uh, how do I decide what my choices are? What is my break ball? That's how I decide because I still don't have a break ball, a uh, side of rack break shot. What, so what are the possible break shots on the table? I see three of them, 15, the eight, and the 12. Now the 12 ball is a good b below the br rack break shot. I think the corner of the rack is gonna be about here, so if I can get the cue ball down here, I can cut the 10 and hit the corner of the rack. That's a good shot. If you're gonna do that, What's your key ball for that break shot? It's got to be the nine. A number of angles on the nine, you can bounce out and get the cue ball here or go two rails like this and get a shot, get an angle on that 12. So that's a real good possibility. If I was going to choose to do that, my next shot has to be the 15 in the side because it's the only other shot I have if I'm going to leave the 12 as the break shot. Another opportunity would be to, to uh, use the eight ball as a break shot, in which case I need the cue ball somewhere close and, and a very sharp angle. That's my least favorite break shot of the three that I've mentioned. Sometimes you, you have, sometimes you have no other choice and you've got to shoot that. But in this case, I have got other opportunities and so I'm gonna choose a different break shot. The third one, which is the one I choose, is the 15. And the reason why is, it's, it's hard to tell from this picture, but it's a pretty sharp angle into the side pocket, but it's far enough from the rail that I'm not gonna miss it. And the cube, if I get a cut angle, a uh, cut on that 15, the cue ball is going to go to the side rail and right into the side of the rack. And I, I really like that break shot. You can hit it with a lot of force and generally get good results. So I think on another day of the week, I definitely would choose the 12 as a, I think the 12 is a better break shot than the 15 in the side. But I, I choose, I choose the, uh, the 15 ball. At, at this point in the rack, I choose the 15 ball. And there's what, five... There's 10 balls on the table, and you've got to make good choices now in order to get on that 15 ball. So what do I always say? If I'm going to break for the 15, where do you look for your key ball? You look diagonally across the table. So, or across the table on the line where I want my cue ball. I want my cue ball to be on this line. So, so does that mean that the 10 ball is my key ball? Could be, or the 3 ball could be the key ball. But I see a pattern from this point. And I'm really impressed with, uh, I, I watch the, the top straight pool players a lot. Thorsten Homan and John Schmidt are the two that I watch the most. They seem to be able to see patterns with the most balls on the table. And so I was kind of happy with myself that I saw this pattern. And the pattern is, what I saw is two things. First of all, the one ball becomes a problem ball because it's in the way of the 15. I need to remove it. And where does it go? It doesn't go in this side pocket, which is where you most, uh, most likely would want to shoot it. So I've got to play position somewhere else. Probably down in this pocket, that means I have to remove the nine ball in order to get on the shot, a shot on the one ball down there. Actually, I, I see, thinking about those things, I see right away that nine, uh, one ball up here is a better shot because there's balls down here. So if I can... So if I can hold the cue ball here, I've got a shot on this ball or the eight ball or the two ball back this way. So recognizing that, the, 
I'm going to shoot the 12, and what I want to do is get a shot on this one ball. So there, there's, there's how you choose. That's how you make your decisions. Ten, see, I'm looking at the one, trying to figure out what I want to do with that one ball and, and how I'm going to shoot the rest of them. And I also see a pattern for these balls on the rail. But let's look at, let's look at the one ball first. So ten balls on the table, I've identified a break ball and a key ball and a trouble ball. So I'm going after the one right now. Did I get it? Yeah, I could shoot the one from here. I've got a little bit more of an angle than I would like, but it's certainly reasonable to cut the one in the corner and just let the cue ball bounce off the rail, especially with five inch pockets. But I want to get a little bit better. So I go ahead and shoot the nine. Now notice that if I don't get perfect on this one, I've got a shot on this uh, stripe ball right here. But as it is, I got perfect on this, this uh, one ball. And I've already taken a look. Oh, maybe I'm taking another look now to, to make sure. But generally in straight pool, we want to remove the balls that are on the rail. And I got four balls that are on the rail. And, and generally you want to attack those early. But I see a pattern where I'm going to leave these four balls to the end. So I'm actually playing for the one and this stripe and the two because I've already mentioned that the 10 leads to the three. Well, how do you get on this? How can you get on this, uh, this 10 in the side with the eight? So if I, all I need is a slight angle on the eight, and watch this. You shoot the eight. You come out, you shoot the 10, then you're on the 7, and then you're on the 3. So it's, so it's 8, 10, 7, 3 is the pattern that I saw. So I'm leaving those four balls. Even though they're rare balls, I'm leaving them to the end because that gives me a 100% chance of ending up with the cue ball right here with a stop shot on the 3 for my break shot. So... This is a non, not a conventional choice. Usually you want to remove your rail balls. But in this case, you know, I'm, I'm kind of picking that pattern right now. Now notice, there's eight balls on the table, and you're picking my end pattern now. You have to if you want to get 100% chance of getting on your brick ball properly. So make sure I draw the cue ball past the two ball so I've had a shot on the stripe. Now I can either go to the rail or draw straight back. I want the cue ball up here for the two ball back in this corner. And if I didn't get it, if I didn't get grid on the two, I could shoot the eight, use the eight ball to get on the two to get on the ten. So either way works. So here's a simple shot. Draw the cue ball to the rail. Make sure I get an angle on that eight ball. Notice that from here, or from two shots ago, almost no cue ball movement. Everything is very tight and controlled. That's what gives me the confidence that I've got a 100% chance. Look at this. Look at the, your position zone for the ten in the side. It's just massive. That's what makes an end pattern foolproof when you just, it's just really hard to mess it up. And, and frankly, I don't like what I did uh, right here. I should have more angle on the seven to make sure that I come out farther for the three ball. Maybe not where I drew it, but it would be better if my three ball was here because then you, you have a bounce shot where you can bounce the cue ball off the rail and really control it well. As it is, I'm, I'm nitpicking. This is just fine. Notice I checked my angle, make sure I'm going to, have the angle that I want, and just a, a, a quick short draw over here. Very controlled shots on all the last six shots in this end pattern. Really hard to mess it up. Let's uh, go forward to the break shot. This is a non-conventional break shot, but I kind of like it. One thing you don't want to do on this break shot is aim at the top of the cue ball because that's going to give the cue ball top English and make it curve away from the rack. Just a center ball or even low and some left English and hit it nice and hard. Going to be hard to scratch on that shot. I think I hit that a little bit soft. I think I should have hit it harder. I would have opened the balls more and had a, a better chance to have a, a better shot. As it is, I'm kind of fortunate that I do have a shot on this eight. Now, I want to talk about this because the, the theme of this week is choose wisely. And you really need to think about this because I have three options with this eight ball. I can shoot the eight and try and draw the cue ball back here. Then I'll have a shot on the three. I could also roll the cue ball forward, maybe up to here, to make sure that I get a shot on the three from up there. And that was my initial choice. And the reason why is from there I can cut the three, and I'm going to try and send the cue ball between these balls into the rack and open them up. And then the nine and the one are insurance balls. It's a little bit touchy. I could easily hit the nine or the one, and things could go wrong. But I'm pretty confident that I can get the cue ball to go through that gap. And I may, but I make a third choice. Remember I talked about minimal cue ball movement? See, I just went and looked. 
I've got a shot on the 11 in the side if I can get the cue ball just past the rack. That's less cue ball movement, easier to control. And then from here, I've got an even better shot on that three ball. And I go take a look at it, and I'm like, yep, stop shot on the, on the uh, three. So what do I have to do with the cue ball in, in order to get a shot on my rebreak? Not, absolutely nothing. Oh, I let it drift forward a few inches. It's even better. Now I just have a, I'm much closer and I have a very natural angle. Um, remember, had I put the, had I drawn the cue ball to here, how am I going to rebreak the rack? I mean, there's, there's other ways, but I would have shot the three ball and had to maneuver and do something else. By shooting two shots, my cue ball moved this far and then my cue ball moved this far. So once again, I'm choosing the pattern with the minimal cue ball movement that guarantees that I'm going to get the shot that I want. And that's how you play straight pool. Thanks for watching.